Uh, our first speaker tonight is Christopher Constant. He is a community activist in the Fairview, Fairview neighborhood. He is a former chair of the Anchorage uh, Fairview Business Association and the current chair of the Fairview Community Council. Uh, ready, round of applause for Chris. Good evening. The state of our city, the state of our city is that we are in denial. We have some pretty serious problems that a lot of people are pretty comfortable not facing. In some neighborhoods, you can't avoid facing those problems because they essentially knock on your door at all hours of the day and the night. But that's not to say it's all bad. There is hope. Fairview is one of Anchorage's historic original neighborhoods. We're in our centennial this year. Fairview has been part of Anchorage after a pretty intense lawsuit that went all the way to the Supreme Court that forced the annexation of our little neighborhood into the city of Anchorage. Way back then when that happened, there was a member of the city council at the time who said, we're going to put the highway right through that neighborhood because that neighborhood's never going to amount to anything. Who knew that some 50 years later, we'd still be facing that struggle. It's kind of a cyclical thing. Some of the problems a lot of you would be well aware of that we see in the downtown, the Fairview, and Mountain View, and other neighborhoods. We see a high concentration of social service challenges. We see a concentration of the low-income housing stock. We see heavy abuse of alcohol and other drugs on the streets in our neighborhoods. We see nearly all of the homeless services being provided in the city, except in a couple little pockets of town being delivered right in our neighborhoods. And we see the overflow of that happening all over town now. So we've got our problems. A little bit of history, a little more history of the neighborhood. How many of you know what a red line district is? Handful of people. So back in the original part of our town site here, there weren't a lot of black people living here. There was a decision made by some pretty powerful bankers that there was one neighborhood where the black people could own property in this town. And that would be Fairview. They literally drew a line on the map and said, this is where those people can live. And it was like that for a long time until an independent and fierce woman found a business model that worked for her and that raised her enough resources that she could buy outside of the neighborhood using her while and guile and cash to do it. So a red line is essentially a line around an area that problems or a, a perceived problem, a population could be allowed to live so that the rest of town doesn't actually have to deal with it. We don't want them here. It's pretty sad, this part of our history. But this part of our history hasn't gone anywhere. It's just changed. So who lives in the new red line? People who are immigrants. People who are poor. People who are mentally ill people who are homeless, people who are chronically addicted. This city has quite an amazing way of sending all of these populations into one area so that on the other side of town, it's really comfortable not having to see and feel and be burdened by the fact that these people, our neighbors, exist. They exist. So our little neighborhood group of activists have been fighting the good fight for, well, I guess since before we were part of Anchorage. I stand on the shoulders of giants when I say I'm a member of the Fairview Community Council and the president of that body. I'm pretty pleased to be able to say I am part of Fairview. A lot of you have heard in the news over the last five or six years, the Carlock Manor Project, you know, regrettably, a neighbor called it the Red Nose Inn. You know, that project where we're going to start moving our homeless people off the streets. Doesn't matter if they're using 
alcohol or not. We just need to get them off the street. It's actually a reasonable concept when you think about it. Of course, our neighborhood always questions, is it wise to try to move people? You're trying to break the cycle of addiction to keep them in the heart of their addiction, which is right there where that whole social service, homeless, chronic alcohol hub is. The hub includes the jail. The hub includes the sleep off. The hub includes the food kitchens, both of them in the downtown Fairview, the homeless services and the mental health services that are all concentrated down there right off the bluff. So there's one other problem that Fairview faces, and that's really a perception problem. If you step away from those problem areas, you'll find a neighborhood that's actually really great, filled with beautiful residents, neighbors, people that are committed to their community. So we actually have a lot of really good things going on. And there's one good thing about all those problems that I mentioned. The problems have grown so big, the impacts of all of the concentration of those issues has grown outside of the scope of our neighborhood. And so now people in South Addition, West Anchorage, the Diamond area, all the way out to even Chugiak, people are feeling this problem. Even our friends, the most social conservative, excuse me, economic conservatives among us, are starting to see the fact that our police hours are being spent so concentrated on these problems that the police aren't actually able to do their jobs where they're needed when an emergency arises. So our little neighborhood has been screaming and shouting, and going to all the meetings we can go to, being present, offering solutions, and doing our best to let everybody know that we have a real problem and that this denial isn't gonna last much longer because if we don't solve it, the problem is just gonna continue to encroach upon those neighborhoods that aren't in the red line. So what is Fairview doing? Fairview is a bee inside of a lot of people's bonnets. We are demanding from the state DOT people that they fix our roads, that our Planning and Zoning Commission and our assembly have unequivocally found that they're unsafe for pedestrians, they're unsafe for cars. I watched a, a very inebriated woman walking down the sidewalk make a sharp right turn right in front of a truck towing a boat. She got smacked. She was sauced enough that she actually made it, no problem. The one I felt really bad for was that poor driver who was just going about his business and could not have stopped under any circumstance. He'll carry that with him for the rest of his life. We went to Juneau last year. We asked, and with the support of 11 community councils unanimously, Chugiak unanimously all voted with us, say, Juneau, we need money to fix this problem. And I don't have a record of any time in the past where a council went and advocated and successfully raised $4 million to increase the services for a neighborhood and for this whole city in need and a population, those people that are suffering. And now I've spent, I can't tell you how many hours with the assembly at a committee that's tackling the question, what are we gonna do with this problem? Because it's a citywide problem. It's a statewide problem. So I guess the bottom line of this talk is that a little neighborhood can do a lot of good if you get the right people and you get them in the right place saying the right things. So that's the talk. Cheers.